Why in God's name would any housewife agree to film themselves putting out rose petals and champagne? Let's talk about the most cringeworthy scenes in housewife's history. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I am very excited to be back and covering Real Housewives of Potomac. Season 5, episode 17, Shifty Wigs. You guys, I cannot believe next week is the finale. I am not ready for this. I'm not ready for this to be over. It's such a good season. I'm really enjoying the cast, mostly. Uh, we'll get into that. And I thought this was a fantastic episode with some weird parts that we're going to talk about. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. All right. So starting out the episode, we got Karen. Her friend Steven arrives. He is the wig doctor, I believe they called him, which was kind of a funny name. She's excited to get to work on her wig line. So this was pretty funny because she's like, I've been on this wig journey since day one. And we have a montage of the ladies not knowing anything about this. They have no idea what she's talking about. The editors are being hilarious showing her wigs before the Steven guy and after the Steven guy. And I'll say he improved it. I think she looks fantastic. Um, yeah, so it's just pretty funny that she's making this part of her storyline, that this is part of the LaDom Wigs collection and something she's always been into and nobody else can back up her story on that. Then we got Ashley and baby Michael. I know his name's Dean, but my God, that kid looks like Michael. They go to meet Monique for lunch and it's nice to have Monique back. I know some people find her, you know, I, I don't even want to go over it. You know how I feel about her. I love Monique. I'm glad to have her back. Um, so Ashley was being shady boots this episode, and I kind of love it. But also, what the hell, Ashley? <laughs> so she's been team Monique, and she still is because she's having lunch with Monique. And it's just funny because she's kind of come for Karen a little bit. I don't know. It's just I think she just likes to stir up the drama. Okay, so she has lunch with uh, Monique, and they first, they talk about how Karen had just been to Monique's, it was Chase's birthday party, and she apparently got schnockered. I wish I could have seen that. Where are the cameras there? Um, and Ashley's like, oh, oh, really? She drank at your house. She drank milk because she said she had an ulcer. Uh, on our trip last week, but now she's drinking at your house. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley, just because you have a drinking problem doesn't mean everybody else has a drinking problem. I agree with Karen later where she says she feels peer pressured or bullied or whatever the word she used was uh, into drinking. They make a big deal out of it if she doesn't drink, and that's kind of ridiculous. I'm not a big drinker myself, so I'm actually with Karen on this one. Who cares? She doesn't have to drink if she doesn't want to. She may actually have an ulcer, or she might decide to drink. Who cares? You stay with Michael. We all judge you for it, but you stay with Michael. That's your choice. Let her have her choice. Okay, so Monique is saying she was invited to the wig party. Well, this shocked Ashley, because as we know, last week's episode, Karen's saying, nope, she's not invited. And Monique's like, wait, what? And apparently Monique's been... A in on this since the very beginning so Ashley's like hmm really let me just call Karen so she calls her and Karen says Monique wasn't comfortable so she wasn't coming and then she denies it and says no you guys are twisting my words and I you know it doesn't really bother me I think I don't blame Karen for this I probably wouldn't say anything either you have a pack of hyenas aka Robin and Giselle standing on their high horse coming for you I'd be like yeah she's not she's not invited but it's Karen's party she can invite who she wants you know like I don't know I just don't feel strongly and then going from one insane conversation to another here's Robin okay Robin 
You and Juan are looking at a house that's $1.6 million. $1.6 million. Just think about that number. And yet, the sentence that comes out of your mouth is, my tax issues were a huge learning lesson. Currently, I'm on a play payment plan with the IRS to get things squared away. Do you really think you should be looking at a $1.6 million house? I'm sorry. You cannot go from the townhouse you share with Juan to a $1.6 million house. It doesn't happen. That's not a thing. She's, meanwhile, saying, Juan better propose. Why? So you can have a wedding and get more in debt? What is happening? Then we go over to the only sane ones of the group. I'm not talking about Giselle. I'm talking about her kids. Her kids are obviously not into Giselle and why can I never remember his name? Jamal. <sighs> Her kids are not into Giselle and Jamal getting back together. Every time she would bring it up, they'd shoot a little dig and be like, we have no say. Uh, she talks about, hey, you want to live in Atlanta? No. <laughs> Uh, most parents, you or, sorry, most kids would want their parents to get it back together, but obviously they don't. There's a reason. I like these kids. They're way more level-headed than Giselle is, and I wish she'd listen to them. She's saying, I love us as a family, and the kids are saying, we're moving on. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, oh, you guys, I cannot with this crap. Why do the housewives do this? Why do they think it's a great idea to throw down rose petals and champagne and have bubble baths, a.k.a. Tamara on OC and every other housewife that's done it? It's so cringe and so creepy, and it really weirds me out. Good for Karen and Ray for getting their mojo back, but you're telling me that with a cameraman standing right outside the door filming the closed door, you guys are, are um, you know, getting frisky? I doubt it. Oh, so cringe. I don't understand this. It makes me uncomfortable. Let's move on. Oh gosh. Let's go to Wendy. All right. Let's talk about Wendy. Wendy, why do you make it impossible for me to like you? I try, but I just can't. And now I don't like your mom either. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So every comment always, and every comment I always say is, what is with this Wendy and all she can talk about is her degrees? It's like a nervous tick. Well, here we are with Wendy talking about her degrees. And her mom is a nightmare. What is with all these moms on these shows, by the way? But, okay. So she's saying, I've been thinking about it. I don't know whether or not being a professor is what I want to do. And mom seems shocked saying, you don't want to go back into teaching? Wendy explains how much she loves the political commentating, and she's so proud of it. People give me kudos. I, I raised, okay, I don't even know. I, I'm just so blown away by this. How is this still your storyline? You're a grown-ass woman. If you don't want to be a teacher, don't be a teacher. If you want to be a political commentator, I think that's fantastic. Good for you. But my gosh, you are just please don't be a housewife anymore. <laughs> You're terrible at this. I know she's new. I'm trying to cut her some slack, but I don't want to. She's my least favorite. It's very hard to watch her. And I put her, I don't know. I say that. I don't know if her Candace is my least favorite. You know, I can't stand Candace, but at least she brings drama. I don't know what Wendy brings except for complaining and talking about her degrees. So I'll just say that. Okay. So her mom is awful, and her mom calls her a spoiled brat and saying she should be thanking her for her degrees. I Who cares? Uh, Wendy says, I feel like a lot of things I achieved in my life has been trophies for you. So that's kind of a messed up relationship, but they hug. It start, I thought it started out feeling okay, but then it felt staged when they hug, and she's like, I'm proud of you, and Wendy's like, that's all I wanted to hear you say. Okay. I think Wendy doesn't have a storyline, so she's hanging, she's just like hanging on to this degrees thing, and I don't, I just can't with Wendy. When is she going to be off my TV? Moving on. Okay, so back to Giselle and her bad decision making. She and the kids are going for a photo shoot. Her friend Cal is there, he's her friend, he's her hairstylist, he's doing her hair. 
This is where we find out Jamal was supposed to be there for this family photo shoot. They haven't done this in like 12 years. Um, so they wanted to do a family photo shoot. Well, his f flight from Ghana to Atlanta was delayed, which caused him to miss the connection there. Okay, here's my thinking, guys. You know, I st I'm always shooting straight and telling you how I feel. I think everything Jamal says is full of crap. I think he's a big old liar. I think he's probably banging some chick and I don't know, missed his plane, delayed the flight. I, I don't know. I don't care. But I just feel like everything he says is a lie. And he feels slimy and shady. And the few times I've seen him on the screen this season, he, he icks me out. It's his personality. It's the way he does Giselle dirty. And it sucks because Giselle is so beautiful. And I just don't know why she's subjecting herself to this man. Obviously, her kids see that there's a problem, but she can't see it. Then we go over to this scaly, disgusting creature. I don't mean the fish. I mean Michael Darby. He really creeps me out, and he really creeps me out this episode. <sighs> but damn, I really can't wait to see what the heck he and Chris are fighting about. That looks actually pretty funny in the uh, finale episode. Okay, so Ashley has made this nice supper, and her mom and her Uncle Lump are coming over. Uncle Lump. Okay. Michael is saying he wants peace for dinner. Oh, okay. Then don't bang other people. Michael's saying, uh, let's see. No, he's pretending to be sweet and he's serving her and he's calling her babe and he's laying it on thick. And Lump is saying, I call him Lump in my notes. Lump is saying, it's great to have this dinner. And he brings up the bad news traveling around. Well, Michael all of a sudden looks shocked, like, oh, I can't believe he's bringing this up. Yeah, idiot, what did you think this dinner was for? I don't know. The whole thing felt so contrived, and Michael was just, like, putting it on and saying, like, you know, I don't know. When she told me that you talked, I knew you'd feel that way and be, mad, be upset about what happened. Well, no shit. They love Ashley. They're looking out for her. I don't, I just, oh, God, Ashley, take this kid and run. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't. There's got to be other rich men in the world, right? Not Michael? Ugh. So creepy. Okay, so he's saying, or they're telling him, you didn't just hurt Ashley, you hurt the entire family. And I just don't believe anything Michael says either. I'll put him in the same, I'll actually... I don't know. I was going to say, I'll put him in the same camp with Jamal, but I actually think Michael's worse. But I don't believe anything he says. I think he's slimy. I think he's being slimy at this dinner. And it just kind of felt like, hey, let me fill in the scene to cover my butt for all the terrible things I've done to Ashley. He apologizes for hurting Ashley, and I don't believe that either. I think he's just trying to make nice in front of the camera. Then we go over to Karen's wig party. It's 30 minutes before the event. Karen's trying to get set up, and that's when Monique arrives. So Karen's super happy to see her and excited to have her there. But it was a really funny scene because Karen keeps checking her watch and her phone. Candace is texting her, I'm headed there, I'll be there soon. So it appears like Karen's trying to usher out Monique before Candace gets there. Now we find out later that's not what happened. That Canda that Karen invited Candace the same time as Monique, which is very strange. I'm assuming to broker some sort of peace deal or something. I'm not sure. But um, I don't know. Or maybe Candace is just full of crap and maybe Karen didn't want her there early. But this was so funny because Karen kept making a big deal about getting Monique out and Monique's waiting for her driver at the door, and Candace is kind of impatiently looking around. Finally, this driver shows up, so Monique leaves, and all her other guests uh, arrive. You think Candace is going to walk in? Well, she doesn't. It's Karen's PR girl, and it doesn't matter. But I love seeing Monique there. I love that she came to support Karen. I thought it was nice and classy that Monique offered to come early, so that way she doesn't have to run into the others. And make it a whole thing. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, I'm not happy with the, the other girls at this event. I'm just not. Like, they all showed up. 
And they were all talking crap from the beginning. It did look like a weird event. I'll give it to them. But Karen's excited about it. If you're there to support her, you should probably support her. They're making fun of it, saying it was in a strip mall. And, oh, Ashley. You know, every time I try to like Ashley, she, go, she goes and stirs stuff up. So Ashley is the one that basically causes all this trouble. She's the one saying that... Uh, what is, let's see, she's saying, she gives Karen Pepsi, we'll start there. She brings up Monique drinking with Karen. So again, it's weird. Ashley loves to drink. She's making Karen feel bad for not wanting to drink. That is a weird thing that not everybody, but some drinkers do. I'm not really a drinker. I've experienced it. It's weird. Who cares? Who cares if I don't feel like drinking? I'll still have a good time. Don't worry. Um, I, a lot of people comment that I'm sound drunk on these commentaries anyway, so there you go. <laughs> I'm not. Um, so Karen's saying it should be okay to drink with her, and I feel like this is a setup. And I get what she's saying because her whole point is every time she gets too drunk and says something, the girls use it against her or broadcast what she said. Like supposedly when she said she didn't like Ray's uh, ding dong. Uh, Karen's saying... Uh, oh, okay, so Robin then, Robin opens her big fat mouth. God, Robin really bugs me right now, too. I sound bitter. I'm not. I'm actually loving this show, but Robin, ugh, what does she bring? Robin says, why do you think it's a setup? Are you concerned what you might say when you're drinking? And Karen says, no, I'm not, but you should be concerned what Juan says when he's drunk, okay? Woo! I thought that was fantastic. Good for you, Karen. Way to shoot that down. And Robin just kind of uncomfortable laughs and says, all I did was ask you a question. I thought that was actually pretty funny. Uh, so Ashley then causes this explosion by telling the group, yeah, um, Karen went to Monique's birthday party. And then also, you guys, Karen invited Monique to this event. And Monique was here earlier in the day. So, okay. Why, what is Ashley trying to accomplish here? Is she just trying to get more screen time? Trying to be the catalyst for more drama? What are we doing here? Um, who cares? Who cares if Ashley, oh, uh, sorry, who cares if Monique was there? What does it matter to them? But Robin has no storyline, so she has to latch onto this and be like, oh, God. Um, Karen's, so Karen's arguing that it's semantics because they're trying to call her out and say on the trip, you said you weren't going to invite her. She's like, it's my damn party. I can invite anybody I want to invite. And I say, you're right, Karen. I agree with you. Um, Robin's saying, well, then why isn't she here now? Well, because, Robin, you make a big stink out of everything. She's trying to have her in and out and trying to avoid this. But Ashley had to bring it up, so here we are. Uh, Karen gets really pissed and says, screw it. I'm out. I'm going to dinner with Ray. So... That was pretty funny. She left her own event early because she was pissed. She went to a dinner with Ray. All right. Uh, Candace reveals that Karen asked her to come early to help set up. So I don't know. I, uh, I'm having trouble believing this. So that would explain why Candace. I kept thinking, why is Candace letting Karen know that she's almost there? Like, that's that's just kind of strange. I don't. I thought that was kind of strange, but maybe. I don't I was just thinking maybe Karen tried to broker a peace deal. Maybe she thought maybe if the two of them get there early, they can actually talk. I don't I don't know if that's the case. It's just my hunch. Wendy has to insert herself when cuz she's you know, she doesn't have a storyline when she's not talking about her degrees and says, "How are you going to leave your own party?" And says, "Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming to some bullshit." <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Uh all right. So Candace is saying, she asked me to come. She asked me to come early. Always with the waterworks. Just jab yourself in the eye a little bit more with that tissue. See if you can get some tears. Uh, she's saying there's something extra twisty about this knife with Karen. Okay. Candace, anytime she talks about this fight with Monique that has been just drug out. Okay. She gets a gleam in her eye. She gets excited. She has something to get the attention for. And uh, I don't know. Uh, 
She said, I look to Karen more than anything. It's hurtful. Okay, Candace. Nope, you don't. You only listen to yourself. You don't care about anybody else. You're so narcissistic. I don't, I just don't believe that she looks to Karen to be this great mentor. I know there are friends before, but if you're truly friends, you might understand why Karen is trying to be impartial during this. You're not. So, I, it's just crazy. Wendy is saying she's not your friend to Candace. So, of course, that's going to stir up Candace. Here's the jab to the eye again. And then we get a flash of next week. And you guys, I cannot wait to see next week's episode. We have Candace singing very poorly. What's new there? We have Robin and Juan in counseling. And it sounds like things are tense. Uh, there's a big party where Michael tells Giselle that Juan... I guess he tried to ask if uh, Juan was going to propose that night, and Juan said, nah. And I'm thinking, well, he probably just doesn't want to tell you, Michael. And Giselle's like, what? I have to go check. So then we see Candace yelling and crying at Karen. What else is new? Yelling and crying. That's her MO. Uh, and then we see a big scene of Michael versus Chris. So Michael Darby versus Chris, Candace's husband. What the heck is going on there? That should be really interesting. I always say Chris seems way more normal than Candace. I don't understand what they're doing together. This should be interesting. I wonder if Michael tried to grab his butt. What started this fight? I don't know, but can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see the finale. Then we go into the reunions, and I can't wait to talk about those as well. And that, my friends, is it for the episode. Such a good episode, such a good season. I'm not ready for this finale. I'm not ready for this to be over. I've so enjoyed it. But thank you guys so much for watching. I've missed you. I miss talking to you guys about this. I'm excited to be back. And yeah, check out my channel. I'm covering all kinds of shows right now. So much going on. But thank you guys for everything. Thank you for all the comments while I was away. I appreciate that. I read them all. I love them. And... I just can't wait to keep going with these shows and talking about this stuff. So have a fantastic week, and I will talk to you soon. I'll be back tomorrow for Below Deck, so check that out. Take care. Bye-bye.